Hello everyone, my name is Olivia Harrison and I am presenting on the at-risk population of the LGBTQ plus community. What does LGBTQ mean? LGBT stands for lesbian, gay, bisexual, and transgender. The Q can stand for questioning or queer. The plus stands for a few more sexualities and identities such as non-binary, pansexual, intersex, and asexual. These are the individuals who make up the LGBTQ plus community. However, to fully understand this community, one must understand the identity, se sexualities, and other terms. According to CNN, queer once was considered a demeaning slur for gay individuals. However, it is now being reclaimed as a self-affirming umbrella term, especially for those who consider labels restrictive. Sex is assigned at birth based on a newborn's physical and biological characteristics. Intersex, intersex individuals are born with sex chromosomes, external genitalia, or an internal reproductive system that is not standard for most females or males. Physicians or parents usually choose the sex of the child, requiring surgery or hormone treatment. Gender identity is an individual's emotional and psychological sense of their gender, which may not align with the sex they were assigned at birth. Gender is a socially constructed role, behavior, and attribute that serves as cultural indicators of someone's personal and social identity. Non-binary is used to describe individuals who don't identify as male or female, and cisgender is someone whose gender aligns with the sex they are assigned at birth. Asexual is asexual orientation characterized by a lack of sexual attraction, and finally, pansexual are individuals who are attracted to all types of people regardless of their gender or sexual orientation. So I have some history. Illinois is the first state to decriminalize homosexual acts in 1961. On June 27, 1969, the Stonewall Riots broke out in New York City. This was the beginning of the gay and lesbian individuals resisting discrimination. The police raided the Stonewall Inn, a popular bar for gay individuals in New York. Two individuals who were part of the Stonewall Riots recounted their experience. Neither Boyce nor Siegel felt fear amid the intensity of the riots. Siegel said that the depictions of the riots being depressing are wrong. Instead, he said it was the last, he said, quote, it was the last, it was the most joyous riot you've ever seen. We were fighting back against 2,000 years of repression. Siegel, who became an activist on the first night of Stonewall, says, Everybody thinks that the Stonewall was one night. It was one year. Siegel also states that after Stonewall, he and others started a gay liberation front, a unit of, for collective active action, passionate demonstrations, and the first Pride March exactly a year later. This single event is monumental in LGBTQ plus history. It was the inspira inspiration for the movements that followed. Now for some events in history that occurred after Stonewall. In 1973, the American Psych Psychiatric Association removed homosexuality from its official list of mental disorders. However, it then added, added gender identity disorder or gender, gender dysphoria in its place, actively labeling transgender or non-gender conforming individuals as mentally ill. In 1981, Wisconsin became the first state to pass wide, statewide gay rights legislation. On October 11, 1987, the National March on Washington for Lesbian and Gay Rights had over 500,000 people, making it the largest civil rights demonstration in the U.S. history. This day is now known as the National Coming Out Day. I have some more history. In 2003, Canada allows same-sex marriage. 
Also in 2003, Rev. Gene Robinson becomes the first openly gay man to be confirmed in a, as a bishop in the Episcopal Church USA. In 2004, Massachusetts legalizes gay marriage. Connecticut, Iowa, Vermont, and New Hampshire legalized same-sex marriage in 2008. In 2011, President Obama the def declares the Defense of Marriage Act unconstitutional and directs the Department of Justice to stop defending the law. Don't Ask, Don't Tell is repealed, allowed, allowing LGBT individuals to serve in the U.S. Armed Services in 2011. Also in 2011, New York gay legalizes gay marriage. In 2012, Maine, Maryland, and Washington be become the first states to legalize gay marriage by popular vote. And finally, on June 26, 2015, the U.S. Supreme Court stuck, struck down all state bans on same-sex marriage and legalized it in all 50 states. Barriers that make this population at risk. The LGBTQ plus community is at risk because there are many barriers to equitable health care as well as social determinants that affect their health. This includes discrimination, prejudice, and fear. Lack of education causes health care providers to feel uncomfortable and unwilling to provide care to members of the LGBTQ plus population. Because of this, nurse practitioners must be knowledgeable and court culturally competent when caring for this population. Without proper education, doctors and nurses do not provide accurate health care to clients belonging to this population, which poses to a major health risk for these individuals. Throughout history, internalized bias has been noted by health care providers who work with the LGBTQ plus pa patients. Because of these biases, <clears throat> lack of education and homophobia Providers felt fearful of contracting diseases from LGBTQ patients. Some providers feel uncomfortable making the pa asking the patients about their sexual orientation out of concern of offending the patients. Education for healthcare providers is crucial for members of the LGBTQ population to receive quality health care. This makes this population to be considered at risk because cisgender individuals never have to worry about what health care providers will be uncomfortable providing services for the reasons stated above. LGBTQ youth are significantly higher for sexually transmitted infections substance abuse, anxiety, depression, suicide, bullying, obesity, and other core mor comorbid conditions. The CDC reported that within the LGBTQ plus population, um, youth, in the youth population, 33% are bullied, 21.9% are forced to have sex, 15.8% are victims of sexual violence, and 17.2% are victims of physical violence. <clears throat> The abu abuse that LGBTQ plus experience may be forced outing, humiliation, social isolation, and even homophobia and transphobia. A survey conducted that found that 61% of bisexual women, 44% of lesbians, 26% of gay men, and 37% of bisexual men experience intimate partner violence. Homophobia is a huge barrier that makes this population at risk. <clears throat> Sorry. At first, the construct of homophobia was not introduced to describe this societal stigma directed at homosexual individuals. Now it is an umbrella term for all negative ad attitudes towards homosexual men and women. Um, of course... No, sorry. Homophobia is known to affect the mental health of gay and other LGBTQ individuals. It affects their sense of well-being, self-concepts, and the quality of their relationships. This also includes the homosexual individual's appraisal, 
perceived threat and rejection, the stress of concealing one's sexual orientation in an effort to cope with the stigma. Correlations between homophobia and alcohol abuse and dependency have been found among lesbians and gay men. Of course, there are correlations between homophobia and anti-gay violence, as well as negative attitudes towards civil rights for lesbian, gay, and bisexual individuals. How society views the LGBTQ plus population. While homophobia is the overwhelmingly negative attitude towards the LGBTQ plus population and one of the leading causes for discrimination, hate crimes, and denial of rights, there are still members of the society that may not belong to may not belong to this population, but advocate support and support for those who belong to the LGBTQ population. These individuals are called allies. Allies can be a friend, family member, or peer but they can also be community organizations. Community prog programs includes physical safety and protection from violence, clear policies to make a safe place for youth, both physically and emotionally, visible indicators like posters, signs, or pamphlets of safety, respect and inclusion of LGBTQ plus youth, um, these programs also include the opportunity to work with staff members who share the identity of the individual. This fosters self-acceptance of LGBTQ plus individuals. Research shows that promoting self-affirming forms through community-based programs leads to increased positive health outcomes. Some needs of this population. This population Population needs quality health care without the barriers of biases and homophobia. As stated earlier, education for health care workers would improve the care that LGBTQ plus individuals receive. Um, the compulsory one-hour lecture on sexual orientation and gender identity development in adolescence, including specific health issues for LGBT adolescents, yielded improved scores among a majority of attendees in all categories one month after the intervention. In fact, improvements were seen after the lecture despite favorable scores before the lecture. Some resiliency factors are that the LGBTQ resources on campus greatly add to the resiliency factors of this population. This gives these individuals the resources they need in order to bounce back from adversities or to thrive just as well as they as others on campus. LGBTQ plus campus resources centers provide critical connections and community building opportunities, which can lead to increased feelings of belonging and therefore improved mental health outcomes. Campus resources also create opportunities for counseling support, a sense of belonging, education, and training advocacy. Sorry, and training and advocacy. And then here are my sources. Thank you for watching my presentation.